As game worlds become increasingly complex, the need for efficient tooling to manage placement and rendering of natural assets becomes essential for any team out there. For our latest project, Time Ghost, we needed smart systems that ensure realistic distribution and variation of environmental assets. At the same time, rendering the immense amount of vegetation we had planned requires technical solutions that are both scalable and highly performant at runtime. Let's take a look at how we approach the environment work for one of the scenes in Time Ghost and break down the workflows and tools used. As a first step, we import the meshes that constitute our environment base into our DCC software, in our case, Houdini. These can be either LiDARs, drone scans, or manually sculpted terrains in Unity. For Houdini, we develop scattering analysis tools that automate asset placement based on landscape attributes. These tools help us design coherent and realistic environments with a lot of detail and variation. By using SpeedTree and standard photogrammetry workflows, we create high quality vegetation prefabs and we scatter these onto the meshes. The scattering systems allow for fine tuning parameters for randomness and density, ensuring natural spreads of vegetation and its variations. The scattering data is exported from Houdini as a point cache or point cloud, using a slightly modified version of the point cache exporter HDA that is offered by Unity as part of the VFX toolbox on GitHub. The purpose of this tool is to save the position of each scattered instance while also saving the scale, orientation, color, age, and health attributes. The exporter generates one point cache for each model used in the scatter. The use of DOTS, our data-oriented technology stack at ECS, allows us to create scenes with hundreds of thousands of entities without significant performance degradation. This is achieved through careful management of entity instantiation and resource allocation. Each Houdini exported point cloud asset is again just a collection of positions, orientations, scale, and potentially some extra data like age, health, color, etc. We gather all the Houdini exported point clouds into a resource called Point Cloud from Houdini Asset, which reads the source point clouds, binds the prefab to be used with a given point cloud using a naming convention, and creates an internal presentation of the data. This data is stored in the point clouds from Houdini Asset. The data is then used by the baking process to spatially partition the points into tiles for faster streaming. The next step is to add an authoring component into an ECS subscene. The authoring component is called Scatter Point Cloud Authoring, which takes as input a point cloud from Houdini Asset and some parameters that control when to load and unload the data and how to subdivide the point cloud data. In order to efficiently stream the data in and out, we subdivide the point cloud data into scene sections which can be loaded and unloaded individually. This allows us to unload and load sections based on the distance to the viewer. This tile size is controlled by the scatter scene section size property in the authoring component. However, these scene sections are fairly large and trying to instantiate everything in one go would cause a considerable spike on the CPU. One scene section can contain hundreds of thousands of points. So these sections are further subdivided into smaller tiles called scatter tiles, controlled by scatter tile size property in the authoring component and the instantiating logic chooses which scatter tiles to instantiate next and which to unload based on loosely defined importance rules. Even with being able to stream instances efficiently in and out, we are still left with a huge number of instances to render. Many of these instances are fairly small batches of grass that cover a fairly small portion of the screen when moving further away from them. Thus, we also bake tile imposters out of some of the scattered instances. A tile imposter covers a certain area and mimics the look of the scattered instances in that area. The data is sourced from the point cloud asset directly because we want to be in control of what type of vegetation we want to include in the tiles. In our case, we are interested in grass assets only and omit any trees that might be in the same location. A tile imposter generator renders all the instances belonging to that tile from above, producing low resolution textures containing approximate color, normal, and depth information per tile. On top of this, a number of most important foliage types are selected and rendered into an atlas from side and above. This atlas is shared by all the tile imposters and is used to produce the detail for the low resolution per tile texture data. Generator also creates a mesh, which is a collection of quads that will represent the tile and orient the quads towards the viewer. During runtime, we project both the per tile low resolution texture information and the more detailed but generic foliage atlas entries to the tile imposter mesh, producing an approximate look of the tile. As the camera moves further away from an area, the individual instances first switch to lower LOD levels and finally are replaced by the tile imposters. Tile imposters too have more than one LOD level, making the quad distribution sparser as the camera moves further away. 
For very distant objects in the scene, we use octahedral imposters. This method allows for disqualifying simple versions of objects that are far from the camera. This enables us to balance between visual fidelity and performance. We have created a simple tool to generate and integrate the imposters directly within Unity. Our full use control system introduces sophisticated configuration settings that allow us to tweak environmental effects like wind. This includes adjustments to things like wind speed, variation, frequency, ensuring that the animated elements of the environment are both realistic and performant. The foliage shader receives the health and age attributes and uses these to create both a natural color variation, but also a more accurate wind interaction. Where, for example, a dry plant is slightly stiffer than one that is green and sways more. Entities are designed to interact realistically with characters within the scene. For example, vegetation will dynamically respond to the presence and movement of characters. The system uses a GPU-based approach to handle interactions like collisions with vegetation and simplified spring physics calculates and simulates the effects of characters interacting with environmental elements. To get high quality lighting results, a scene will typically require different lighting setups in different areas. Tight spaces with lots of irregular services for light to bounce off and wide open planes where the lighting is more or less uniform usually need different approaches. Unity 6 includes the new Adaptive Pro Volume feature which automatically places light probes where they're most needed. When visualizing probes, it's clearly visible that the ones in the trench are much more dense than on the plane, capturing more detailed changes in the lighting. Scenario blending lets us bake different states of the lighting setups and blend between them. In this demo scene, there are separate lighting scenarios for different times of day in the same environment. Changing the sun angle and ambient color is accomplished through real-time lighting, but the baked lighting scenarios now also allow for the indirect lighting to match. The ability to seamlessly scatter and light massive amounts of natural assets from intricate close-ups to expansive horizons is crucial for today's advanced digital environment creation. These tools and workflows don't just elevate the quality, they also make the process significantly more efficient and flexible. Are you ready to explore these techniques firsthand? A demo project, which includes a Unity 6 sample scene with assets and the dots and ECS tools discussed is available now on the Unity Asset Store.